uh, Tim and Dave Killian, Boy and Bear, welcome back to Australian Musician. Thanks for having us. Uh, we're here because you're playing the forum tonight, we're backstage. Um, it's the second gig of your new tour for the uh, new album which is coming out September 27, uh, Suck on Light. Um, it would be impossible to talk about this album, Dave, without uh, acknowledging uh, the last few years. Yeah. Um, let's get that out the way. Sure. Um, yep. It's an illness or a condition that you've been suffering from for, for many years and gradually got worse and worse to the yeah. point where the band uh, decided to take a break so that you, you could get over it. That's um, yeah. Condition called chronic uh, dysbiosis, I believe. Yeah, I guess the the dysbiosis, which I've sort of come to realise is now associated with a lot of different conditions, but that was the kind of um, the eureka moment, I guess, once we worked out what yeah. was going on there. Uh, yeah, because uh, the band didn't know what was going on, you didn't know what was going on. Yeah. What was the worst part? Was it the actual pain of the illness, the illness or was it more sort of an emotional thing? Or the whole thing was just basically crap? Yeah, yeah, it was really full on. I, it felt as if I was over a period of time slowly. My functionality of my brain and it was um, it was really struggling. Um, and I, I don't know, I just felt like I was getting deeper and deeper into this pit of just like the ringing in my ears louder and my vision disappearing and just, yeah, it was just the whole thing was pretty, pretty horrible, really. Yeah. So um, writing about. Uh, that stuff yeah. for the album was, was that helpful therapeutic yeah I think so I think it got to a point where at least I personally felt like I had enough functionality and energy to contribute and then as we built momentum I was felt optimistic that we were going to be able to do this and I think the only way it, that was going to be possible was to kind of um, to allow it to be part of the process to sing about stuff that was honest whilst trying to walk that line of not making a super dark, heavy record, but looking at something from different perspectives. Um, and I think along the way it was, it became quite therapeutic and um, a, a sort of nice way to unpack what had been quite a heavy five, six years. Yeah. Well, what about you guys, Killian and, and Tim? Was there a point where you guys met as a band and, and said, well, what are we going to do? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when we first sort of witnessed Dave's decline and his, his ability to dysfunction sort of drop off, we obviously had lots of questions. We didn't know what was going on. And I mean, that was going on for a number of years, probably before we got to the point where we figured out what was going on. Um, but yeah, when, once we spoke about it, it became, it became real because all of a sudden it wasn't something that's in his head. It wasn't us questioning what's going on. It was a serious condition that needed to be addressed. and. You know, we had to, unfortunately, or fortunately, the people look at it, put it all on hold for a while while we, you know, focus mainly on Dave's health and giving time and space to spend, um, I guess, investigative time and figure out what's going on and see all the specialists and get up with some sort of treatment. And yeah, I guess from our perspective, but as well as Dave's, we all had to consider the idea of the band stopping is not what we wanted. Um, it's not what anyone wanted, and we didn't know how long it would stop for. Um, but we sort of had a chat about it. We ended up deciding, at least the four of us outside of Dave decided we're going to keep writing music regardless. So we ended up, if we probably had a month or two off after that chat and then we ended up getting back together and having some writing sessions and obviously it was probably a bit therapeutic as well, just spending time with each other and... I know without me those first few were... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so Dave didn't turn up to these ones because obviously he was still needing some more time to process and figure out a way forward. but. We, the other four of us at least, were definitely um, still keen to write, but also, like I was going to say, it's a bit of a, it's a way that we can also discuss what's going on and sort of delve into it a bit because it is confusing and you're not sure how to, you know, just even think about it and deal with it. Yeah. Uh, Suck on Light is the title track. What, what does that mean? I think it's a metaphor for hope. <clears throat> I think it, um, that line sort of, fell out of my mouth at some point in the song and I really liked it and um, it just seemed to emulate or at least personally what it felt like that idea of like really drawing as much energy and positivity out of a situation as possible. 
uh, Work of Art is the opening track and it announces that you're exploring new sounds. Yeah. Um, how important is it to develop sonically with each album rather than just record new songs? Yeah, I'm not sure that we've ever thought about like intentionally developing our sound or pushing ourselves. I mean, we're always pushing ourselves further, but I think when you, when you listen to, you know, you've got five people that listen to a broad range of music, you just, you start to have things you want to try. So, you know, whether it's those electronic loops or whatever it is, you sort of, um, I guess we're just, we're just sort of pushing ourselves creatively. Not with the intention of going, oh, we need to change our sound or whatever it is, but just because it's fun and, and you, you want to write better songs than you've written before and, and more interesting stuff, um, as uh, Dave likes to say. And, and I think that was, um, you know, on this record, working with a producer uh, named Colin Dupuy in, uh, in Nashville, he was really great at sort of getting the crazy things that, that were in our minds, like into the recorded music and go, yeah, I can make that work. Um, he was, he's some sort of like crazy professor at doing that. And it was, it was amazing to, to, to sort of see how he worked when you, you give him an idea and give him a reference for it and he's like, all right, cool, we can make that work. So, yeah. But to a degree, you, you self produced or co-produced. Yeah. So you, you, as a band, you had more involvement in, in the sound this time? Yeah, absolutely. The idea was to come into it and sort of have, have him as a sixth member, which is kind of an idea we've had for a long time and we've kind of sort of got halfway there on a number of occasions. But for, for this project, it was really, you know, we, want, we wanted to sort of be, or well, sort of, I guess, have our hands on the wheel a little bit more, but at the same time, be completely open to, to what Colin brings. And, and I think we were able to do that. Yeah. Did you record as a band as you did last, on the last album? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for the most part. Um, as in the question in terms of live recording. And yeah. Look, we did, but we were less um, wedded to it. Like, it was really about what suited the song. Um, I can't remember. I literally can't remember. I don't think we'd laid any of the songs up. Pretty much most of the songs were all like live recordings. And then a couple of times I might fix up a vocal or there was some flexibility, which was important this time. Have I missed anything important? No, you've done a great job. <laughs> 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 we, it wasn't limited to that though. I think what you're touching on is, um, we, we just, we had a chat with Colin about it in advance that we didn't want to be too pragmatic about this is how we make music, this is how we record an album and we wanted to make sure he wasn't of that sort of same camp as well and he was very much into experimentation for whatever made sense on the day for the right song just to go for it so we had we had some songs which we did it like the previous record literally the band all in the room live the tape and just get a good take and that's pretty much 80 percent of it done Whereas we did have other songs where we weren't precious about it, we would strip it back to its core elements and we had a couple of songs where we had Tim and Symes and myself and sometimes John as well would play, you know, a very stripped back version of the song just to get this bass layer of groove down and then we would build on top of that and we'd do a second layer of groove and a second layer of melodies and parts and, and hooks and we did essentially paint a picture a few times step by step which is a, a new experience for us like we hadn't really ever made a song like that before um, whilst that wasn't the majority of how we recorded this record it definitely definitely happened and we had a few songs that were yeah sort of a, a different approach really so we weren't yeah too wedded to any one way of making it um, the press release says that you were going for 70s guitar and drum tones. Uh, how did you go about achieving that? Well, it was interesting. We, <clears throat> I think just to, to start that answer, it's important to know that we were looking for the right person to work with for a long time. And what drew us to Colin was his sounds. That was the first thing. We sort of heard records and just went, this sounds like what we want to sound like. And then you do your research and you work out who. Part of that was driven by a brief that we'd written. Because if we knew if we were co-producing that, it's so easy if you're lucky enough to be in our position to get distracted by the opportunity to work with lots of amazing people. 
Um, I think writing the brief, which included these 70s tones, just meant it was easier to make decisions to come back on, um, go, well, does it fit what we're trying to achieve, you know? And I guess to answer your question, Colin just gets really great natural sounds, but he also is very happy to affect sounds and mess with them beyond recognition. So I think that the 70s vibe probably comes a lot from the use, you know, what snare and what guitars and what bass we're using particularly. Uh, and then a lot of it is really just Colin's ability to get, to capture those sounds effectively. Yeah. Um, Dave, your vocal tone on a lot of the songs is, is almost reflective or contemplative. Mm. Um, it, it really uh, feels like you're really feeling the, the lyrics this time around. Mm. Um, were you feeling more emotion to recall during the recording? I, it's been really interesting through the demo process. What, something I've noticed in hindsight was that I'm singing in a lower register a lot. I think that was a reflection of not having a lot of energy. <laughs> and so that was this sort of space that I was in. And I think as it turns out, and there are songs where the vocal gets up, but I think it was about, yeah, if you, when you're singing from that space, you tend to, um, you're singing in a certain way to be effective as opposed to boring, <laughs> you know, which is a fine line. Um, I don't know if, I don't necessarily think it was more emotional. It was probably just, I had a very clear vision by the end of, um, you know, writing about what every song was about. I knew very much what this, this song was representing. And I think that's probably, hopefully in a nice way, what is what's coming through because I'm, it's not just a vague story. It's like, no, I know what this is and that's the story I'm going to tell. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Vesuvius is, uh, sorry, Tim, did you want to? No, 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 no. Just, I was, it, Vesuvius is a particular favourite of Dave's. Democratic like, band, so I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he was trying to hand me the mic and I'm like, you might want to answer this. Uh, Vesuvius is a, is a dreamy, uh, lovely way to end the album. Mm -hmm. uh, how important was the track order for this album? I mean, it's, it's always important. Yeah. Um, I think the, the way it tends to work with us is we sort of work out the bookends. You know, we sort of always felt like Work of Art would be a great opener. Um, I think I, if, that's also quite a dem, uh, democratic process, <laughs> working out the order. And I think if John was here, he would tell you how many possibilities there are when you have 12 in a row. Apparently it's quite a large number. So it gets <laughs> quite confusing quite quickly. It's, it was interesting, we would, we, I think we just worked at kind of pairing stuff together and it's a real challenge if you don't want it to feel like, you know, one song up, one song down, you don't want one side of the record to be all ballads and it just has to feel like that energy is flowing and I think most of the time if you're getting it right, it's, it's kind of dictating itself. There's lots of different ways to do it but it just, yeah, it was important that what, the time you got to Vesuvius it felt like, yeah, we've landed, yeah, that was fun. Hopefully, let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. Or not. Change record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on uh, sonically on this album. Um, were you keen on reproducing as much as you can live? Go on, Tim. Oh, no, because this would be good because you're all pretty relaxed. <laughs> um, I, I think, I think it, We've always thought it would be nice to be able to reproduce more of what we do on the record live, but we've always hit a roadblock with it because we're not the kind of band that likes to play to track or to, uh, I guess, use too much. Um, I guess we want to we, we want to be hands on and, and we want to control what happens on stage. And we've seen too many times when bands with laptops, like the laptop goes down and it's just like super awkward. And anyway, we're like I don't know, like we we just love playing as a band, so. Some of the elements on this record were like, well, maybe we, we need to experiment with, you know, getting some electronic sounds in via keyboards and drum pads. And um, I'm like notoriously bad at technology, but I was like, well, I've got to learn it. So uh, I've, I've, I've sort of managed to get my head around, like 80% get my head around trying to make things like work of art sound, I guess, closer to the record. 
and John's been doing some great stuff in Symes. And actually, Hosking's even playing a, um, a, tiny, mm. a tiny little drum pad. Yeah. And bringing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> With it. But it, that's actually been really fun for us, though, because yeah. uh, Colin, in the recording process, was like, um, I make records, you guys can worry about that stuff later, mm. you know. So we, we, we sort of did go down the rabbit hole with sounds and sonics um, on the record. And then from there, when you come to producing the live set, you've got to make choices and decisions on, on what you prioritise to come out um, in the song. So I guess we'll see how that goes. We're only one show in now. I think it's working. Mm. Yeah. So how many of the new songs have you rehearsed up? To play for this tour, we've only well, we're playing three. We've kind of rehearsed up five or six. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're, we're playing three. We're playing "Suck on Light," which is the title track. The first single "Hold Your Nerve," and we're playing "Work of Art" as well. Yeah. So have you had to change the stage setup at all to play these songs? No, it's still the same setup, as in where everyone is and uh, gear-wise. Ah, uh, I'm the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> I just have an acoustic. <laughs> uh, I mean, for the most part, it's fairly similar and fairly consistent with what we've done before. But like Tim was saying, we've um, brought in some drum pads and a few things where we can just trigger sounds. There's no like loops or anything out of it, but it's, you can, it's a performance element. So we can get those electronic sounds from Work of Art and a bunch of other tracks. and. Tim can actually play the groove on the pads and it just keeps that human element and human feel behind the whole performance. So like, yeah, learning that technology curve was enough for the five of us. It took a couple of weeks <laughs> just to figure out how do you change patch and like adjust the volume. And, yeah. But yeah, we got there pretty good, I think. And I don't know, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, the, in terms of the layout, I don't think we're ever gonna change that. It'll be too much of a <laughs> weird moment to be like, hold on. It's good. Yeah, it sort of works right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're just about to do sound check. How do you like to use sound check? Just to check levels, or do you explore new ideas and I mean, try new songs? I don't want to hug the mic here. But <laughs> it just fell into my hand again. <laughs> um, usually, we like depends where you are in the touring cycle. So right now, because last night was the first show up in Brisbane, we're definitely using it to freshen up on a couple of older songs or some of the new songs to get them a bit more comfortable. But as the cheering cycle goes on, we actually do usually do two different things. We'll bring a lot of covers and we'll play a lot of covers in soundcheck because it just keeps it fun. It's also a great sort of musical sort of task to learn other songs and understand how they work and perform them. And it's just a really good thing to do. And then the second thing is we actually end up writing a lot of music on tour, like particularly in the States. You, you might, or anyway, if you're just cheering for two or three months straight and every day is another soundcheck, you need to you need to change things up. So we end up writing a lot of music and jamming ideas and there's always an iPhone out recording some, you know, some little scraps down and that's pretty much the, yeah, the main sort of ways I think we go about it. Whereas like right now, like right at the start, it's a little bit more technical. Let's make sure this works and yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave, I know you, you weren't that keen on talking about gear, but um, I think the last <laughs> couple of interviews we've done, we've discussed your J45 and, and yeah. the pickup and, and butchering and cutting holes into it and trying yeah. to blend two pickups and I, yeah. where, where are you at with your uh, guitar and sound? So I'm still on the, the J45 and I'm using a, just a Magmite like sound hole pickup, which is pretty good. It's always a never-ending endeavour to try and get a really great acoustic sound. And I'm just convinced there's maybe more exciting ways to do it, but at the moment, at least personally, I've, you know, there's been quite a bit to bite off these last six months, so I'm just kind of going, okay, we can sort that out. I'll keep pushing that further as we go. Uh, you're about to go on an extensive overseas tour after, yes. after this tour. Are there any particular uh, towns that go particularly nuts over boy and bear overseas? I mean, at the top of my head, Canada's always, I mean, that's not a town, is it? It's a country, but <laughs> <laughs> that's always pretty good to us. We, we sort of managed to do really um, great shows anywhere, really, from Vancouver to Montreal to, like, it's just a nice vibe. Mm. Um, there's all these Hello. always interesting pockets in the US where we do, like, I think like Dallas, we do really great oh, yeah. numbers. Um, you're always surprised, you know, some nights you sort of, 
you're not expecting, you know, expecting a, a pleasant night and you get up and it's jammed and there's this vibe and um, that's really exciting. Where else? We just, Seattle just sold out and we had to roll into another show in Seattle and um, so yeah, there's just little pockets of excitement, which is amazing. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, on behalf of music fans all over the world, uh, we're very glad that you're back on tour and a new album coming out, and we wish you well, and thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Appreciate thanks it. for having us.